Hi, good people. It's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent, and I hope you're doing great. For those of you who are new to this channel, this mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related with an occasional other DIY or creative project. For those of you returning, thank you so much. I hope if you all enjoy this video, you will give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, click the red subscribe button so that we can stay in touch and you'll get updates about my videos. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about some things that I think looking back on this year of what I've worn. So not necessarily things released this year, but things that I wore. Um, I put together a gift giving guide of suggestions. Um, the way I'm approaching this is via the 12 days of Christmas or the 12 types of of personalities that you might want to consider giving gifts to. However, I know that not all of us celebrate the same holidays or if at all. Um, so perhaps just see this as some gift giving ideas. Um, and I, I just, you know, these aren't perhaps themes that would fit everyone, but I thought about, yeah, just kind of 12 different types or people who you might consider giving gifts to and some ideas behind those. Um, you'll see a little something for everybody here. The prices range literally from $5 and to about the 150 range. Most of these, however, I've gotten on sale, even if, if at that price point. There are a few that I paid maybe full price for. So everything from things that are super duper easy to find at a um, retail or department store to niche to things that might be a little harder and that you might have to go on a hunt for, but hopefully it would be fun for you or the gifty. So I'm going to dive right in. Um, this is, for those of you who don't know, um, the 100th anniversary of Guerlain's Shalimar, which is one of the most popular scents in the world and of all times. Um, I believe that Shalimar was originally um, released in 21 uh, or produced in 21, but I think it wasn't released until 25 because they had a copyright issue or something, but it, it is formally the 100th anniversary of Shalimar. So one of the first suggestions I would have is to give a new bottle of Shalimar to someone, a flanker of Shalimar or a vintage Shalimar to somebody who loves Guerlain. So I'm gonna show you a few of these. This is kind of the today's version of um, the EDP. This can be found very economically still on discount sites um, and is just, you know, a vanilla, smoky, wonderful perfection. Oh my God, it's so gorgeous. Um, and then I personally was hoping to get the new, there's a new um, kind of version of Shalimar. They they were, they produce something every year or two that's kind of a new or a flanker um, version of Shalimar. I really wanted to try, there's a vanilla version that just came out recently and sadly it's already off the shelves. I have to say I'm so upset about that. Um, so that's what I was going to suggest, but I'm not going to because I have been on a waiting list for a month or so and I'm not hearing anything. So um, I'm going to give you some examples of other flankers that you can find right now if you want something a little more modern. This is the Souffle de Lumiere um, that can still be found on discount sites, I believe. This runs about 35 or 40, I want to say, and this is a wonderful kind of lemony version. Beautiful. Um, this was released a few years ago and was kind of a holy grail scent for me until I got it. This is the um, orange flower kind of version of Shalimar. I think you can find this from like 50 to 80 these days. Um, and as you can see, one of the great things about it is it's a gorgeous bottle. This is the um, Souffle Entense, which I think can still be found. Um, again, I think in the 30, 40 uh, range. And this is a benzoin kind of vanillic incense -y. It's so gorgeous, deep, dark vanilla. Ugh, so nice. And then if you know somebody who's, if those aren't ideas that you love and you're into some, or you're friends with somebody who's deeply or a loved one is deeply into Shalimar, you can always go on the hunt for a vintage bottle. I have found all the vintage bottles I have, which is about five or six, I think, in antique stores and uh, tag sales. However, you might not have time for that this time of year. And you can go to a place, you know, an eBay or a Mercari or an online marketplace where you might be able to find one. But as you can see, this bottle is so beautiful. So to somebody who loves Shalimar, that's a really great gift. So that's number one. So Shalimar lovers, somebody who's, I would say, classic, enjoys history. Um, that's the first idea. 
Okay, next in no particular order, frankly, is um, something for the really, really niche or arty, artsy or arty loving perfume lovers. This is blowing my mind. Um, Y'all probably know who have listened to my channel before. I love a, a bargain. Um, but this year I have learned there are a few things worth splurging for. This was a birthday gift to myself this year. And this is a scent by Francesca Bianchi called Lost in Heaven. Um, I have a few of her scents on my list of um, once. This was the first one I purchased. Um, these run, I want to say, I want to say like 115 to 140, 150 tops. Um, and for somebody who love, uh, loves, is really artsy into artsy scents or niche scents, you cannot go wrong with Francesca Bianchi or Bianchi. I, I think I smelled five or six scents. There wasn't one that I wouldn't love. I, I, I mean, they almost all went on my want list the, after I smelled this and purchased it. It is, this is, I mean, the name Lost in Heaven is no joke. I have this on today. It's the first time I've worn it. Actually, I bought this in, I think, late August. For some reason, I've been really, um, I don't know, I've been treating this in a way that it's just too precious. Um, but I, I just absolutely love this thing. And um, sorry, I'm trying to turn off my radio. Um, I cannot get enough of this thing, and I can't imagine somebody who is an art lover or a niche perfume lover who wouldn't be so blown away. This is a scent, these are scents that are worth investment. They're just artworks. And I mean, and I, I you probably know if you've watched my um, channel before, I am open to everything high to low, low to high. Um, I can find something I love in just about any genre, any store, you know, but this is one that just blows your mind as a perfume lover. Um, and in this case, oh, this is just, it's like everything in a bottle. I get a fair amount of powder um, incense. I haven't really spent a lot of time with this yet, but I just know that it is one that the first time you spray it, you're like, I, I just can't even get over how good it is. So for an art lover or a niche lover, Francesca Bianchi, any of her scents I think would do. And by the way, now I can't promise this based on when you watch this video, but right now I think she has 20% off sale going on, which is a really nice perk. So this would probably be a hundred or less. Um, really great. Okay, next. Um, this is a rather new to me scent, but I'm so, so blown away by it. I just can't even get over how delicious this is. So this is for, I would say, either somebody who's into emerging perfume houses, um, kind of smaller indie niche perfume houses, or gourmand lovers. This is by a company called House, H-A-U-S, of Gloy. I think it's Gloy, G-L-O-I. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing it. New to me. I had heard that some of their scents are really great. I've watched some YouTubers talk about some really interesting scents. Um, I just got my first few in the mail maybe a couple weeks ago. And I this is I had been really sick earlier this month, kind of off and on, but bad, having a tough time earlier this month. And this was the first thing I sprayed after, and I'm crazy in love with it. It's called Lavender Pear Anise Cake. So, truly... If you know a lavender lover, a pear lover, somebody who's into anise or licorice and gourmands, this thing is every, all of those things in a bottle. It is so freaking gorgeous. It smells nothing like anything I own. I'm a pear lover and this is a true beautiful pear. These run only $30 for one ounce. Unbelievable. They also have some really interesting scents that are more, that are, I would say are more popular in the perfume community. One is called Ghost Puff that smells like popcorn like caramelized popcorn. And then they have one called Blood Orange that's really beautiful too, but they have quite a catalog. So I would say look into them, but this was $30, um, House of Boy, Lavender Pear Anise Cake. Just in love with it, so beautiful. And they have really great like other kind of body project products and they're all affordable. Next, some something from my favorite um, small independent niche house. And I would say this is for a style of somebody who's, more deeply into, I would call like witchy or hippie scents, but the best of their kind. So um, Solstice Scents, um, 
If you're just starting out with them, they have perfume samplers of five or 10 cents, and you can look online and they have a wonderful selection. This is a small house, so the perfumes come and go. They're not always in stock, but take a look. They have quite a list. And again, I think there's something for everybody here. Um, the samplers run, I think, around like high teens to like 30-ish, something like that. Great way to like thrill a perfume collector that they get to try things. And even if they don't love them all, sure to find, you know, at least a few. And then um, if you already know Solstice Scents, a, uh, something you might want to consider is I like they produce oils and then they produce something called burnishing glaces that are like uh, body sprays, but with a beautiful high perfumed oil content. Um, the oils I think are around 17 to $20 and so are the burnishing glace. So you could get a set for somebody. This is one called Corvin's Apple Fest that is the most beautiful vanillic apple. Um, so that would be really fun for somebody. And then if somebody's deeply into soul system scents and you've already tried them, I would say go for one of their, um, two ounce bottles of perfume. This is one called Lace Draped Spectre. I think it runs around 90 if I'm not mistaken some of the best stuff you'll ever smell in your life. You won't smell like anybody else. This is a, a wonderful carnation scent, but they have many, many di different things. Uh, many of them, I would say, decidedly unisex, but really, really great. So that would be the fourth day of Christmas, in my case, or any holiday that you are um, celebrating. And this would be for somebody who's kind of into witchy or hippie scents. Next is a scent I would say that would be only for, truly, but definitely for somebody who's into green perfumes, green scents. Um, they're not super popular these days, but those of us who love them really love them. This is relatively new to me, but I just thought the presentation was phenomenal. The scent is just mind blowing. And so I would say almost on the verge of bizarre in a great way, like so unique, interesting, artistic. This is by a company called Beaufort. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. London. These are made in Britain. This is 1.7 ounce and it's called Fathom 5. And the reason it's called Fathom 5 apparently is because this is supposed to be kind of like inspired by the deep sea, but not only the deep sea. And here we get artsy again. Um, I think Fathom 6 is basically when you're pulled into the seafloor. Like if you're dying and, you know, anything's dying and going deep into the seafloor. So Fathom is fi 5 is right before you hit that. So some of the scents you might experience. I personally don't get as much underwater scent. I don't tend to love water scents. Um, but... What I get is the greenest, greenest thing I've ever smelled in my life. Um, I want to show you, this is the box. And I don't know if you can see, there's like kind of a map. And then you open it and inside is the perfume. And this is just the most gorgeous. I mean, it's got like every element of green, including, I think it has, it must have black currant in it, which smells like tomato leaf. And many, and, and to me, I get lilies too. And so again, the, the artiness here, the artiness here is it almost smells like a, or it does smell like a funerary scent. But for me, it's the most interesting green kind of and lily scent. So really interesting. And I think I could be perfectly unisex too. Just love this thing. Not for everybody again, but definitely for the green lovers. Now, slightly cl close, but slightly off point there would be something that's for a gardening person or a person that's deeply into gardening or the smells of the earth and gardens. Um, this is an oldie but goodie and many fa famous people wear, a lot of people talk about it. However, um, this is new to me this year and it's uh, Diptyque's L'Ombre Don. Um, I, I should have grabbed the box so I could show you all, but this is a beautiful presentation too, the box itself. And then on the back of every Diptyque scent, there's always a beautiful kind of illustration to get lost in. This is, again, all the smells of the garden, but particularly this is a little different than, for instance, Fathom 5 that I just talked about. It's got definitely more of a tomato leaf, even stronger, black currant vibe. But to me, it's got a bit of a smoky kind of vetiver feeling going on too. I'm not even sure if vetiver's in here, but I would say it's... Um, a little more hmm, green and, uh, or sorry, smoky and of the earth, but definitely with the green elements. To me, it smells so much like a garden. It's just great. So L'Ombre Dawn by Diptyque. I think these last two scents, I think range from about 100 to 150. Um, so those are more investment scents. Something for somebody who's deeply into just the cozy mood. 
let's say Vanellic, um, and this happens to be affordable as well. So the company philosophy makes some really great sense for affordable prices. I'm gonna show you a set that I have that was very economical on the hunt. This is fresh cream. Um, so this is a giant bottle, I wanna say it's four ounce. And then this is the hand cream, but I have all kinds of products in this scent. This smells like sugared milk, it's wonderful for a cozy feel, but one that I really want is called Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere. Um, and I believe Philosophy is having a sale online right now. I can't remember if it's 20 or 40% off, but they have really nice perks around the holidays. Um, both the Fresh Cream and the Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere are just cozy scents. The Warm Cashmere one definitely has more of a cashmere or even a bit of a fireplace feel where this is just like sugared milk, but they're both beautiful. Real affordable. Um, I think the scents start... The perfumes around this depending on the size only like 20 25 go up to like 60 or 80 but they are often super discounted you can find them even sometimes at places like tj maxx um so that would be one for cozy feel next i would say is cozy but also decidedly unisex a lot of these scents are but i would say like this one every time i wear it i'm like i do not know a human that loves warm cozy scents it would not love this scent this is also super economical and this is um yups or yups sorry les bon so the bath um part of the reason i put this on the list this year i've talked about it before but um the stakes are kind of high now i i read recently in a couple perfume forums that these scents are being discontinued um they're still really cheap but i i personally am hearing that they're not going to be a lot around for long i can't prove that but I would say if you like the idea of this or if you've even tried it, go get it. But this is, to me, it it combines so many things I love. It's got a tobacco kind of feel or scent. And though cherry isn't a note, there's definitely a cherry feel like cherry tobacco in this scent. But it's also, the fact that it's called the bath is perfect. I definitely get that vibe of when you first step out of the bath and there's that steamy warmth. Um, all of that comes through in the scent and it's dirt cheap. I want to say I paid like, 20 or 25 for this bottle. So wonderful, comes in a nice box. This would be a great gift for um, anybody from a male who, or um, a person who presents as male, uh, who likes like tobacco kind of scents to, you know, some of us ladies and everybody in between love tobacco scents too, or just warm cozy scents and a great buy. So, Yops Le Bon, decidedly unisex, wonderful scent. I think it would please just about anybody who likes perfume. Um, next is something to consider for the uh, vintage lovers. So obviously, depending on what vintage scents this person likes, it would change. I'm going to give you a few of my examples of things that I have found over the recent years that were tremendous finds. I found both of these relatively on the cheap. Um, but I would say if you know somebody deeply into perfume and you know what scent they might love that's vintage, find a really great old bottle. Um, go looking in the um, antique stores. Again, that's a harder find. But I would say then go online if you don't find something pretty quickly. Um, and on places like Mercari, eBay, just watch. Watch the auction. See if you can find something for a decent price. I'm going to give you two examples. I walked into an antique store this summer or the spring. And they had a bottle of YSL's champagne, which is now discontinued. I can't even get over how good this thing was. It was $20. To somebody who loves a scent, I think they sell for two, three hundred online now because it's discontinued and it is phenomenal. So there's an example of how you look. Sometimes you can find something for a great deal. I love um, vintage opium, YSL's opium. I love it not only for the scent, but I can't get over how beautiful some of the presentations were. This is one that was called Secret de, de Parfum. And just look at this bottle. I hunted and hunted online for about, I don't know, just a couple weeks. This is a few years ago, but I found this bottle for, I think it was $55. And so there's another example of something that would just, if you knew an opium lover, for instance, it would thrill them to no end. So just look out for their favorite scent in vintage form or if it's discontinued. Another um, 
let's say genre I would look for is somebody who loves music or who loves high fashion. This would work for both of those types, I think. This is the new perfume and set by Iman. For those of you who don't know Iman, she is an incredible, beautiful, phenomenal model. She also was one of the first people that I knew of to release a makeup line that was inclusive in that it included women with a dark skin as she has. Um, she was one of the first um, black or dark skinned models that I ever saw and I, just blown away by it. I, I used to love to watch her. And then she and David Bowie got married. David Bowie is one of my favorite musicians, um, rest in peace. One of the most phenomenal artists ever to, I think, live on this earth. They were together. And for those of you who are deeply into perfume and music, you've probably read that David Bowie wore some really, really interesting, beautiful scents. Um, I'm trying to think one was, I think Creed, is it called Silver Mountain Water? He wore um, Paloma Picasso scent called Minotaur. Um, he wore some very vetiver heavy scents. And then she uh, wears her own scents. And this, from what I understand, is supposed to be a combination of their scents. And it has a lot of um, vetiver. I think it has bergamot because they got married in Italy. And I think that scent reminded her of that. You can read articles about how she approached creating this perfume. This is a scent that I got on HSN. Um, there was promotion when it first came out. I think the set originally retails for like 80 or 100. And I got this for 60. I want to say they had a really, really good deal. So keep an eye on HSN or just buy the bottle. This is the, um, I think it's a 1.7 bottle. It's a roller ball and a cream. Um, I just tried this the first time the other day. And I'm going to be really honest. It is a scent that is a bit challenging for me. And it's because um, I think I have a pretty open mind, but there are certain things that I definitely feel are super male marketed. This to me smells more of a male scent than a um, female leaning scent. Um, but I think for those of you who are experimental, who are deeply into music, who are a fashionista that so loves Iman, um, and I will say after the, so when this, when I first sprayed it, that was the experience I got where I was like, I'm not sure if this is for me. And then within about a half an hour, 45 minutes, I was like, this is really good. But it need, you need to be patient with it. Um, or if you're really into experimental or kind of gender bending sense or the idea that kind of like um, two people's senses combined or if you like either of these people a lot, this is just a really cool idea. Um, so called Love Memoir by Iman, who I'm crazy about and loved her beloved um, past her husband who passed, gosh, what is it, about five years now, I think. Oh, devastating for those of us who love David Bowie. Um, okay, so I believe I have two more types or days to talk about. One is kind of this, one of the last ones is looking toward spring. Um, so somebody who's really into getting um, their hands on a spring scent early or starting to investigate spring coming scents. Um this is a company called La Romatica, and I love all the scents I've tried so far. The first I tried uh, got a lot of hype, and it's called Kulfi, which is supposed to smell, this is an oil, like the Indian scent. I want to say this retails for like around 30. Um, really, really nice. But what I think I've experienced that they do best so far are kind of like fruity florals, but not... They're not um, your basic fr fruity floral. They're really, really inventive and amazing. Um, one is called Hello Delicious. I think these retail around 40, if I'm right, I forgot to look. And one is called Brocade. One that I'm dying to have is called Nine Dragons that I believe has some tea and kind of Asian influence scent. Really, really good. Um, so these are really nice, affordable. So these would be great for somebody who's looking to spring, somebody who's into niche scents, small independent houses, or into fresh fruity kind of scents. Really, really good. Um, the best of their kind, I would say. Um, last but not least, um, here are some real bargains or something I would say are great for either bargain hunters, um, people who are really, really on a tight budget or some stocking stuffers. Um, so Bath and Body Works, I, not, I know not everybody loves them, but I think most places are something for everybody if you look hard enough. 
they have some tremendous sales going on. Every few days they have a different sale. And so I've gathered these over a few weeks. Um, and these to me are scents that are not very talked about of theirs. And I think they're great and they're so unique and beautiful. Um, so I got these on sale for either $5.95 or $5.50. And so if you keep an eye out on their site, they will, they will discount them eventually, I promise you. So I'm going to talk to you about three that I think are great. Um, one, oh gosh, darn it. Who recommended this to me? Somebody lovely on my channel. Oh, I, I apologize. I forget. Recommended Almond Blossom. So I love their uh, Ultra Shea body creams are really, really thick moisturizers and then their spray. So if you wait long enough and get these on sale, tops, this would cost you like $12. Um, just keep an eye out for their sales. They retail around 17 or 19, I want to say a piece. Um, but on sale, again, they go from five, six, seven all the time. So that would be great to get a set. In their aromatherapy line, um, I think this is so beautiful. It's called Restful Moon. And this is, again, the body wash and the cream. And the the washes and some of the moisturizers come this way too are in these beautiful glass bottles. Like the presentation's phenomenal. And again, I paid $5.95 for both of these in this case. And this is a patchouli sandalwood um, and vanilla scent. And it's all those things. And it's beautiful. I mean, this to me almost smells niche. It's so good. And then if you just want to get a spray, I don't have the, the um, cream yet, but I would love to try it is a, they have a very popular scent gingham that's a little um, screechy to me, but this new gingham heart of gold is really beautiful. Oh, it's really nice. Um, the fragrance notes are crisp golden apple, creamy vanilla bean, and warm sandalwood. And um, these are on sale for $5.50 right now. So this would be great. Stocking stuffer. Even somebody who's in deeply into perfume, I think this would surprise them because it's not your average Bath and Body Works. Uh, and I think they're very unique for their line. So those are the 12 ideas I had. Okay, I'm going to end though and talk about People ask me a lot, and I've noticed people ask other perfume reviewers a lot, what's on your want list? I have to be honest, I think some of us, including me at times, is afraid to share this list because they often are long. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, I have a pretty large collection of perfume, somewhere between 250 and 300, I would say right now. But this year, in the last couple of years, what I've been trying to do is really deaccession things I don't wear as much. So I actually am going to try to get down um, my collection to the, something a little more manageable for me. However, so one thing I'll mention is this is also a great time of year to sell perfumes. If you have something that you don't love, this is a time of year people are le looking for gifts. So it's a good time to deaccession and kind of tighten your collection. But I thought I would share what's on my want list. It's an astounding around 45 or 50 cents. I thought I would just talk through them quickly because I find it really interesting when people talk about what's on their want list. I know some of us are a little afraid to share it because our lists tend to be long and also they probably tend to be have some things that are really hard to find. And so I'm going to share that list just because I think it might be interesting for people to hear what a like deep perfume lover, a crazy perfume lover really wants. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to rattle through these quickly pretty quickly um, and talk to you about what is on my list. And it's it's kind of like a little bit of everything too. So I thought this would be interesting. So pardon me while I pull up my list really quickly. Um, and for those of you who are inspired, um, I would love to hear what's on your one list. <laughs> I think that is one of the most interesting things to hear what other perfumers or perfume lovers really, really want. Um, this also, I thought, would extend the gift giving idea list just because, it, you know, just to give an idea of, again, what a YouTuber per perfume lover would really love. So I'm going to dive right in. What I had mentioned was the new Shalimar. It's called, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Melisme Planfolio Veni. It's off the shelves right now. Can't find it. Hope to someday. By the way, I don't expect to get these all in a year. Like this might take me five years to find these. And again, I'm going to be deaccessioning things to like replace these with. Okay. 
the um, independent house called, I think it's Kais uh, in the US. I think they're out of um, California. It makes a really interesting gourmand sense. I really like when she combines gourmand with floral and she has a new, it's supposed to be like a gourmand orange flower scent. And I really love orange flower. Her scents tend to be really well priced too, around, uh, you know, 10 to 40 or $50, depending on the size of the bottle. Um, so I really want to try that scent. I love the niche house, small independent house called Alchemia. I'm going to do a video about Alchemia soon, but the scents on my list by them are called 1891, which is kind of a, I would call it a masculine leaning kind of lavender, but it's so freaking gorgeous. One is called Carnival of Illustrious Hearts. I haven't tried. I, these are all just new ones that I want to try. Dusk and Autumn, and one is called Quintessence of Debauchery. And then um, Mason Margella. Uh, a lot of you will know that line. They are carried at um, Sephora. There are two scents that I believe are a little harder to find, but I, I have on my list I really, really want to try. One is called Matcha Meditation. So it's a green tea scent that's supposed to be interesting. And one is called Across Sands that's supposed to be super dry, like the desert and um, incense. Um, the house Dua, a lot of you might like Dua or not like Dua because it's a house that tends to kind of dupe other fragrances. I really like, I haven't tried Dua since yet, though a lot of people talk about them. I really want to try though. They dupe some scents that are impossible to get anymore that are out of commission. And one is, um, Tabac Blonde, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful carnation scents of all time. So really, really want to try that. I have a list here of vintage or vintage leaning scents that I want to find. Uh, this is very easy to find, still made, uh, Rochas uh, Femme. I've heard great things, including from um, Wafts from the Loft. For those of you who know their channel, they're amazing. Um, Lauder Cinnabar was one of my first loves. Uh, would love another bottle of that. Chanel Coco along the same lines. Um, the company Crown made a scent called Stephanotis that you, you literally or I can't get my hands on ever, but it's always on my want list. And then easier to find are, I want to dive into some of the Salvador Dali perfumes. I want to try the original perfume that's supposed to be, well, it's for women, they say, and it's supposed to be like a floriental benzoin kind of scent. Um, there are other Francesca Bianchi uh, scents that I want to try, and they include um, Under My Skin, Angel's Dust, and Tiger Tiger. Um, for those of you who don't know, I love the independent house called Iris Parfums, um, and I really, really want to buy, I've tried these both and I love them, um, the scent Green Spell, it's one of my favorite green scents, and then the scent called Bel de Jour, which is one of the most beautiful orange flower scents I've ever encountered. Um, a cheapie that can be found these days is uh, La Perla's La Mia, and I think it's La Mia Perla, actually. It's supposed to be a wonderful cheapie scent that smells just really cozy and comforting. Would love to try that. Um, on the other end of, like, kind of investment scents, I tried some scents in a local perfumery here. A lot of you might know this name because she sells her decants and scents online. It's called Indigo Perfumery. But I tried a bunch of Ex Nihilo scents there, and the three that came to the top for me that I would love to own are Fleur Narcotique, I hope it's pronounced Honore Delights, and French Affair. I thought they were both, all three just drop dead gorgeous. An oldie but a goodie, one of my first favorite fresh, like, pear scents is Anique Goutel's Petite Cherie. I'm on the lookout for a couple new scents um, that are kind of, I would say, like in common markets, you can find them at Alta, and some of you might roll your eyes, but I'm telling you, I tried them and they're so good. One is um, uh, Gio, Terra de Gio, and it smells like almond blossom. It's so, so nice, beautiful, beautiful. And one is the Kardashians, uh, Kendall's, it's called KKW Olive. It smells, it is one of the most unique uh, celebrity scents I've ever smelled. It smells niche. It's green, olivey, uh, and has like a vetiver feel. I'm not sure if it has vetiver in it, but can't wait to own it. Really nice. Um, from the independent house, Sucre Bay, uh, I really want to try. I love things that smell like root beer, and they have a scent, actually. It's supposed to smell exactly like root beer that came out, I think, this year. Um, I love licorice in Annecy scents and uh, a friend online um, recommended a scent by Chris Rusak called Beast Mode that I really want to try. It smells really inventive and interesting. Um, 
I want to try this Middle Eastern scent by Ajmal called Oath. If you look it up, frankly, I want to try it because of its bottle more than anything else. I'll be honest. It looks so beautiful. It's supposed to be kind of a meditative scent. Um, a scent I've had on my list for a long time, it's a little pricey for me, is Victoria Minya's Hedonist. It is one of the most beautiful, seductive scents I've ever smelled. Um, it smells like booze. It's so nice. Um, would love to own that. There are three scents by the indie house called Motif Olfactif that I would love to own. They are Toma. Um, it's got a longer name and I apologize. Ugh. Nectar Boise, Boise and Oasis. They're all three are just tremendous. Um, a designer scent that I would love to own is Chloe Nomad. Uh, I think a lot of people have talked about it. It's just a very original, beautiful scent for, I would say, a designer scent. Um, when I was in Paris in the drugstore, I tried a Caudalie scent. I hope that's the way it's pronounced. It's just called the Vines or Le Bean, I believe. And it smelled so nice. It definitely had a great bee feel, but um, an earthiness, a lightness, beautiful. Um, something that my friend Autumn, hi Autumn, shared with me this year that I hope to get my hands on someday is by Histories de Parfum, and it's called 1804 George Sand, so it's named after the um, author and artist, and it is one of the most beautiful pineapple scents I've ever smelled. Would love to own that. I've read great things about Miller Harris's Fleur Oriental. I do not own it. Would love to own that. Um, I would love to own, um, a few of you have talked to me about the perfumery, independent perfumery in New Orleans called, I believe it's Hove. And there are a couple carnation scents they make. One is called, I think, Belle Chasse. And, and I forget the name of the other, but there are two carnation scents I would like to try. Another thing I would like to try and I would suggest for any perfume lovers are sample sets of houses they might want to try. There is a woman that goes by the name of The Pleasure Center, S-C-E-N-T-E-R, online, and she sells really interesting decants, uh, kind of like curated groups of decants of really interesting houses or perfumes. Um, I want to try the one that she's created for House of Caron, uh, for Diptyque, and then I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I've always wanted to try the Kiko is a Macheri sense. Um, she has all three, so I would like to try those. And then Last but not least, I have about five or six scents that are really spring leaning that I want to purchase for this coming spring to review and to wear. One is uh, two by Guerlain. One is the newly reproduced or re-released Opre Londe or After the Rain. Um, I really want that. I also really want their Aqua Allegoria Herba Fresca. Um, really beautiful kind of fresh um, herby scent. Um, a beautiful green floral I tried at Indigo Perfumery. It was um, Ducita's, it's called Cavatina. Just a beautiful green floral. Again, La Romatica's Nine Dragons I really wanna purchase. And then I am going to probably butcher this last name. A lot of you were talking about this house and there was one that was really vanillic that's been popular, but I think it's Coera de Ong. It's, um, and the name is Atelier de Or. It's like a, Fruity, floral, but one of the best I've ever, ever smelled. So that's on my list as well. So that adds up to about 45 cents. That's my current want list, friends. It changes all the time, but that is my want list. So hope this was helpful for those of you who want to, or either deeply into perfume, want to buy your own gifts for yourself or for others. Um, who are deeply into perfume, I hope this this lists, these lists help. I would love to hear what are on your one list. I would love to hear that. I hope you'll share that, at least a few that are on your want list or what you might be purchasing for others. Would love to hear about it. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're enjoying the holidays, if that's your bag. And hope to talk soon. Cheers, bye.